Let me clarify something right at the beginning. The term hacker does not necessarily refer to someone who hacks into computer systems. Hacker is someone who is highly skilled and proficient in working with software and computer systems. Over time, the meaning of the word hacker has evolved, and it has become more closely associated with computer hacking since the late 20th century. People have always wanted to get into where they are not allowed. The forbidden fruit has always remained sweet. The concept of hacking has to become too romanticized to be true. Initially, this is the person who programs with enthusiasm. If you ask the question, how does a hacker differ from a general mass of programmers? The answer will be clear. A hacker has a deeper understanding of the structure of the systems he works with. You can, of course, immediately rush to study the different attack types, install Kali Linux with a lot of ready-made tools, but it will look exactly the same way as you pull the monkey behind the wheel of the car. And to be honest, you cannot bypass the program's protection without disassembling its code. You cannot connect to the server unnoticed without understanding how internet protocols and operating system work. Using ready-made tools without knowledge in order to upset the balance of this world is not hacking, it's fraud. Okay, I explained it as best as I could. Based on this vision, we are now creating a list of books. You may ask what books we are talking about in the era of the video content. YouTube can replace any source of information. Yes, it can easily make you an ordinary programmer. But hacker, never. The more complex the information, the fewer people know it. The fewer people teach it, then even fewer people teach it in the way in which it can be absorbed by an ordinary person who does not understand the profession. So books are still the only source of information stored in themselves in depth in relatively simple words. Layer choice is determined by criteria area of knowledge without which all the other IT areas are meaningless. For ease of perception, let's divide them into seven main parts, throwing out all that unnecessary. These are programming languages, computer architecture, networks, algorithms and data structures, cryptography, administration of operating systems, and separate endpoint file format devices. Why? Let's talk about this at the very end. This does not include such technical things as 3D graphics, compilers, or such non-technical things as social engineering and other areas that are at the beginning of the journey will only erase a lot of questions to which you simply will not find the answer until you go through all the previous topics. Among all these areas, programming languages are the only thing that YouTube is able to cover completely, replacing books. That's why we skip this area. I focus on the next steps that come after languages because it is these next steps that will allow you to become whoever you want in IT. By focusing only on learning languages, we will not achieve anything because without knowledge of the internal elements of the rest of the topics, the programming language in hands of the hacker is useless. Internal elements here are dozens of subtopics for our topic. Their depth is limitless. Many of them can be safely placed in a separate category, if it makes sense for you. Specifically for some, it will be important to understand the weak points of the network protocol to ensure security. For now, though, it will be critically important to understand the assembler in order to disassemble the programs. For another one, it is important to understand neural networks for your own experiments. Depending on this, the emphasis of learning will be shifted for each of you. But all the basic books, the whole basic path that every beginner begin is almost the same. Initially, all these shifts are not present and our main task is to master the basic things so let's starting from them, everyone can independently choose their own future path. So the long but very important introduction of the book is almost completed, and we are finally ready to compile this ill-fated list that will always give rise of hundreds of disputes and evidence that the list is wrong and there is a better one. To avoid this, I will avoid the two most important problems in choosing programming books. Point 1. Advanced books require advanced knowledge. What it means? It means that continue is easier than starting. Most of the really cool scientific and deep books are written by the best professionals in the field, you just simply won't master the meaning of them. There is no sense in recommendation them, as a lie will turn out to be useless. Start to abandon due to misunderstanding or start in order to finish with full understanding. Point 2. Complex things need to be separated and not mixed. Any beginner needs information in the language that he knows for a quick start. 
Studying both the language and the profession at the same time is scattering of your attention that will stop both the study of programming and the study of the language itself. Learning the language from technical literature is not the most pleasant activity. In this regard, studying English based on fiction books together with the studying grammar will be much more effective in terms of speed of learning the language. Also, learning complex programming where even on your own language there will be a lot of misunderstanding will be much more effective in terms of learning programming. Based on all mentioned, I selected books that will not allow one half to fall off due to ignorance of the language and the second half to misunderstanding the technical information. Let's begin. Charles Petzold, God, the hidden language of computer hardware and software. In this book, there will be no programming. Just together with the author, you will create a computer from complete scratch, starting with the lights and wires and ending with a high-level programming language. Hmm, sounds complicated. In fact, any other source would explain it with such information so that it would require being an electronic engineer, programmer with 10 years of experience, having knowledge of physics, of coding, and so on. Why is this book unique? Because all this is explained in the simplest possible language. However, you need to understand the less simpler you have to explain something, the less depth of knowledge you get. As an entry point into the technical world, after which it will be at least something clear, at most, there will be a temporary motivation to continue. Andrew Tannenbaum, Structured Computer Organization Author structured all the basic information about the computer into layers, beginning with units of measurements and devices, types of memory, and ending with virtual memory of operating systems and assembly language. The main difficulty of this book is that it actually contains too much to allow you to read it in full without getting tired of the flow of the technical information. It is better to study in specific chapters. Choose the topics that you need specifically at this moment. To put an end point to the understanding of the entire architecture that you have studied earlier, programming language assembly will help. The secret of its success is practice. What we previously only imagined in our heads, now you can feel in your hands. Low-level processor commands will give you the maximum idea of the work of any high-level program from the point of view of storing it in memory and executed step-by-step -by, -step by processor. This knowledge is a direct path to disassembling. Andrew Tannenbaum, David Weatherall, Computer Networks Computer networks are imprinted in many areas of programming, including networks. The main plus is exactly the same in his, his previous book. All knowledge is clearly divided into specific levels. However, in the case of networks, it is more difficult to do differently. On the contrary, the network model itself, according to which all data transfer between computer works, was initially divided into specific levels, each of which has its own role, its own protocols, its physical devices, and its own, let's say, features in organization of security. This is one of the few areas of programming in which each topic is connected between, forming a single system. Skipping some chapters means not understanding the entire mechanism of the system. But therefore, yes, the book will have to be read in full. Aditya Barkava, Grokin Algorithms With algorithms, everything is much more complicated. This is a pure puzzle that is almost impossible to explain in simple language. And few people have the desire to understand this on their own. This is the goal of this, write complex books in simple language. This, in turn, requires a strong simplification of technical details that would be undesirable to simplify. The book describes basic algorithms, recursion, search, sorting, and so on. The so-called classic on which more complex structures are built. Here is more important to understand that this book is a vision. To remain in the study of the algorithms to this book, understand nothing. This is one of the algorithm book that everyone can understand and most importantly, read to the end. Simon Sun, The Code Book, The Secret History of Codes and Code Breaking Studying cryptography without this book in our time, I think, is complete madness. The author has done almost impossible. To create so smooth and beautiful entry in so such complex topic, this is a real art. This book is not overloaded with mathematics and algorithms. Its task is to explain in simple language how humanity got to the modern algorithms. After it, you can dive into more technical literature, in which you will already understand at least something. For example, such literature is Bruce Schneier's book Applied Cryptography. The problem here is that there are no simple books on technical cryptography, 
So any such literature will definitely require knowledge of mathematics, which will have to be improved on the fly to understand the structure of the algorithms. The book reviews everything related to cryptography, from mathematical foundation to the key management and analysis of many algorithms. It is difficult to read it from the start to finish, and not everyone needs it. A step-by-step -step study of its different chapters over a long time will be probably the best solution. Andrew Tannenbaum Operating Systems Any book related to operating systems is almost guaranteed to cover layer administrations. Using the capabilities of the operating system without describing its structure. Using this book, you won't be able to write your own operating system from scratch, but you will be able to learn a lot about the theoretical implementation of its part, from processes and threads to virtual memory and implementation of file systems. Next book called Unix Linux System Administrations Guide. As many as five authors at once. The overwhelming number of servers running on Unix systems and the ability to administrate them. This is, in principle, the basic skill of any programmer that does not need discussion. This book touches on almost all aspects of system administration from a practical point of view and deservedly is one of the best in its field. The remaining books will revolve around the section with the file device. The fact is that the most important vulnerability is always where, where the user is located. The user of the operating system interacts with it through file launch, image, text, music, or program file, doesn't matter. Matters that, that it gets into its memory and start working. Such things are usually described at that documentation level. They fit into just a few sheets and do not need books because they are essentially straightforward. Studying the structure of the media content in the form of picture files or music files will get you familiar with data conversion. David Salomon's book Data Compression covers lossy data compression methods. If lossless compression is relatively easy to learn, then understanding lossy compression will make you resort of studying mathematics again. This is cool because when you understand why you are studying it, studying it happens many times easier. The meaning gives motivation, and motivation gives results. You need to understand that all the books listed will not make you a hacker instantly. They will give you an excellent start by paying attention to each topic for deeper study. You can find all these books in the description. Good luck studying, young hackers.